In this session, we will show you how to create a three-dimensional surface using the material function called Parallax Occlusion Mapping in Unreal. First, to add a plane, press the Q button in the upper left and add the plane and sphere objects from the shape category, arranging them as shown in the video. Next, right-click in the content browser to create a material. Name it arbitrarily and enter it. Initially, we will create a material with only normal applied and then add parallax occlusion mapping. Create three texture sample parameter 2G nodes in the graph, naming them base color, AO, and normal. Insert the corresponding images into each. Then create a texture coordinate node and connect it to the UV of each texture node. After connecting each of these nodes, apply and return to the scene. Drag and drop the material you just created onto the plane on the left. Now you can see the appearance of the plane with only normal applied. However, as you can see when viewed from the side, the plane does not appear three-dimensional compared to when viewed from the front. By looking at the side of the sphere inside the plane, you can visually confirm that the stones look flat. Parallax occlusion mapping was developed to overcome these limitations. Now, copy the material you created earlier with Troll plus D, name it differently, and enter it. Add the node that appears when you search for parallax occlusion mapping in the node. There are many nodes to enter, but I will explain each one. First, the height not texture is a texture that recognizes the height value. Add a texture object node and insert the texture used in AO earlier. Then to recognize the UV of this texture, create a texture coordinate node and connect it to UVs. Since parallax occlusion mapping essentially moves the UV of the texture based on the height value, it is essential. To read the value of the height map, you need to set the height map channel. Press the 4 key and click on the graph to create a constant 4 vector node, setting the value to 1000. The default is 0001, but in RGB, A the a value is 1 unless it's a PNG with transparency. Now, press the S key and click on the graph to create 3 parameter nodes. Name them height ratio, max steps, and min steps. The height ratio is a value that adjusts how deep it looks, with the default being 0.1. Set the minimum to 0 and the maximum to 0.2. Think of each step as the number of samples used to calculate the intersection within the material function. The more there are, the more accurate the result, but it's also heavier. I will set max to 64 and min to 32. In fact, it's almost done, but I will use the remaining input nodes below to utilize the self-shadowing technique. Create a static bool node, set it to true, and connect it to render shadows. Then, for the light vector that receives the direction of the light, create a sky atmosphere-like direction zero node that receives the directional light in the scene and connect it. Similarly, create two parameter nodes and name them shadow steps and shadow penumbra. Shadow steps are the number of samples used in the process of determining the intersection, like earlier, and penumbra determines the intensity of the semi-shadow within the generated shadow. Set each to 32 and 1 respectively. Now it's time to use the Parallax Occlusion Mapping node. Drag from the Parallax UVs node and create a Name Route Declaration node in Utility, naming it Parallax UV. Similarly, create Shadow and Pixel Depth Offset, naming them Shadow and Pixel Depth Offset respectively. Go back to the previously created texture nodes and remove the originally connected text board nodes connecting them to the Parallax UV node. Then create a LERP node, connecting the base color node to node A and creating a multiply node with a constant value of 0.2. Connect the base color node and the 0.2 value to multiply. and connect the multiply node to B, connect the shadow node to alpha, 
And now you can see that a darker texture is applied to the shadowed areas. Previewing the shadow node will show that it has a value of 1 in the shadowed areas. Create two parameter nodes, inputting 0 and 0 0.5 respectively, and connect them to metallic and roughness. Finally, to add an effect where a pixel with a high height value obscures a lower pixel, create a pixel depth offset node. Adjust the intensity by creating a multiply node and a parameter node, and connect them as shown on the screen. After applying, create an instance of the material you just made and drag and drop it onto the plane on the right. Now select the node's plane on the right and turn off cast shadow in the detail panel. You can now see that, unlike the plane with only normal applied, it appears more three-dimensional and retains a three-dimensional appearance even when viewed from the side. Of course, the silhouette of the plane remains unchanged which is a limitation of parallax occlusion mapping. By utilizing this feature, you can create three-dimensional objects without the need to intricately create meshes.